So with further ado, I'm going to start this off. I'm going to kick it to GT. Number one, I apologize. Let me back up for just one second because when you think about what we have here today, you've got energy from Western Pennsylvania and Allegheny and Washington all the way through State College, all the way to Susquehanna County. And we have congressmen from all three areas represented. So truly, we're stretching the Commonwealth. But we're going to start with GT, who's right in the middle of the heart of it, with his representation of coming out of Center County. So GT, I'll hand it over to you. And again, I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your schedule to meet with us and to interface with your constituents, sir. Well, George, thank you so much. Uh, greetings, everybody. Uh, I really appreciate the invitation to participate in this webinar today. The opportunity to speak with you and really to join two outstanding members of our Pennsylvania Congressional Delegation, Guy Reidenthaler and Fred Keller. Uh, thank you to all of our participants from today's webinar. I um, look forward to your questions and to hearing your thoughts uh, and your input. Um, you know, since coming to Congress, I've been proud to represent the historic Pennsylvania oil region and, and the many conventional operators producing today. Uh, Pennsylvania oil and gas really is the backbone of many rural communities throughout the Commonwealth. And it's a lifeblood of our economy. Now, I'm proud to represent so many oil and gas companies, some that have uh, continuously operated for over a century and multiple generations in the, uh, within the 24% of the landmass of Pennsylvania, I have the privilege of, of serving and representing. I've also been proud to work with many of you since the beginning of the Marcellus production more than 12 years ago, making Pennsylvania one of the top gas producing st states in the nation. You know, with oil, gas, natural ga oil, natural gas, coal, nuclear, and renewables, energy has been among our staple industries in Pennsylvania since really since the emergence of those technologies and resources. Now, after securing a qualified and trained workforce, energy is the next critical consideration and cost for almost every business and industry. For American families, energy is a key part of the family budget, whether for the comfort of their homes or, quite frankly, to commute to work or into the community. In many ways, Pennsylvania started all in uh, 1859 when Colonel Edwin Drake drilled the world's first commercially successful oil well in, in Titusville, thereby launching the modern petroleum industry. You know, the importance of this industry is on the state, nation, and world can't be understated or overstated. Uh, from transportation to powering our homes and manufacturing to development of feedstocks, energy plays such an important role across the board in our, in our daily lives. It's also especially so for our nation's farmers as agriculture is an energy intensive business. From electricity to diesel fuel to fertilizer, agriculture is fueled by the hard work of farmers and quite frankly, the energy that you all produce. You know, Pennsylvania and America's farm income has, uh, has been reduced by one half over the last eight years uh, for, by the loss of markets and the increased regulatory costs all attributable to government missteps. It's hard to calculate how many Pennsylvania farms actually have been saved in these difficult times by the subsurface lease and royalty checks that they've received. <clears throat> the Pennsylvania oil and gas industry certainly has earned a lot of credit for protecting and preserving our Commonwealth's food security. Now, oil and gas is a legacy Pennsylvania industry is critical to today as, as the role it played in transforming the world over the past 161 years. When we allow science and facts to drive our energy policy, we, we determine that the, the known and estimated energy reserves in the Commonwealth and the nation were significant, if not also adequate, to get us to the next generation technology revolution at whatever point in the future that occurs. Unfortunately, despite great advancements in technology and the identification of vast domestic oil and gas reserves, the past decade has been pretty tough for oil and gas. Sadly, these difficulties have been inflicted by the body that was supposed to make our lives better, government. States that unconstitutionally impede the interstate transporting of energy via pop pipelines, unelected bureaucrats that ignore science and facts as they advance their own anti-fossil fuel agenda, governors that want to kill the economic golden goose by taxing energy production out of existence. Most recently, nearly every sector of our economy, including oil and gas, uh, the times for the, those sectors have all gotten worse 
and more difficult due to coronavirus. According to the Energy Information Administration, uh, given most states having issued orders asking people to stay at home, gasoline demand has dropped 32% from a year ago uh, for the same period of four weeks ending April 15th. The huge drop in U.S. gasoline consumption in recent weeks due to stay-at-home orders during the COVID-19 outbreak has pushed down both oil and gas prices since there is an excessive supply of both. And the space needed to store that excess supply is running short, which is part of what led to that first ever negative oil price on Monday, April 20th. Now, if America is to maintain an adequate oil and gas infrastructure, remain dominant as, as the world energy producer, and assure a return to a robust economy supported by energy independence, Congress has to lead. Congress has passed several rounds of coronavirus response to offer assistance to our economy and families as this pandemic continues. And to me, this assistance is about three things, saving lives, saving jobs, and saving our economy. The flagship assistance of the business is the Paycheck Protection Program, which will help convert payroll and operating expenses for up to two months from a loan to, to a grant status be forgiven. If eligible, the federal government forgives those eight weeks of cash flow, rent, utilities, uh, 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 health care, paid sick time at 100%, up to two and a half times the average monthly payroll. We'll say if, uh, this is something that's been very beneficial to uh, our oil and gas companies, uh, but also very beneficial to to our family farms as well. Now, additional funding has been appropriated for the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program, which is administered by the Small Business Administration. And Congress is currently weighing next steps, but it's not clear what additional legislation may be voted on in the weeks to come. While our economy is incrementally turned back on by the dictates of governors, it appears that energy costs will take some time to rebound to levels of profitability. Now, working with uh, my colleagues the, on the Pennsylvania Republican Congressional Delegation, I've reached out to both the U.S. Department of Energy and the White House, initiating discussions that any future COVID-19 economic recovery package includes provisions for oil and gas small businesses being mobilized to address the chronic orphan well legacy that we have here in Pennsylvania and elsewhere. Now, these oil and gas businesses have the workforce to scale the equipment and the technology to perform the needed orphan well plugging to address this long-standing environmental concern. Now, this would support uh, that this nationally critical infrastructure, and that's what, how I look at our oil and gas here in Pennsylvania, that that infrastructure remains in place and functional until the energy prices rebound to a reasonable level. Um, in the meantime, I'm open to any new ideas that you have and uh, uh, that you might have at this time. And uh, thank you again for today's webinar. And, I look forward to uh, to your questions. GT, thank you so much. And again, we're going to hold the questions till the end for all three of you. But truly, I appreciate the leadership you've uh, you've provided. Again, focusing uh, on agriculture and your background in healthcare. You know what we're up against.